the, what the Bible teaches is that man does possess free will and we do have the ability, even though, yes, we do have a sin nature, but we're not so utterly depraved that we can't, I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is my atheist uh, neighbor, uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. Even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. My atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, my atheist uh, neighbor, uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. Hopefully he will. Cause I've been working on Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. I hope your another day is going good. Everything's going well with you. I'm getting ready to play you a clip that will demonstrate that people that hold to free will believe that when they make the choice for salvation, they're doing something good and they're doing something virtuous. Something that this click, this free will click on YouTube has been in complete and total denial of. But you will see that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you will see that Greg will give clear implications that when someone believes the gospel, they're doing something good from their free will. And you're also going to see Greg Jackson boast in the fact that if someone ultimately comes to the faith that Greg Jackson and is witnessing to, it's because Greg Jackson did it. It's because Greg Jackson was working on them. And this is why I say that free will doctrine leads to boasting on a colossal scale before God, because you're boasting that you did something good and virtuous by believing the gospel, but also you did something good and virtuous by getting someone else to believe the gospel that you did it. And also that the person you were witnessing to, they did it. They did it by their will. In other words, they were born of their own will. And yet the scripture says those who are born not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, nor of human decision, nor bloodline, but they were born of God. When people are born of God, it's just like being born in this world. You didn't have a choice to be born in this world. When we are born of God, we didn't have a choice. It wasn't by our will. It says, not by the will of man. Decisions are made out of people's will. And it says, not by the will of man, but of God. So when we were born, we were born of God. We weren't born of our own will. So I'm going to get into this clip, and I'm going to play this clip. It's a very shocking clip when you start to analyze and break this down. All right. The, what the Bible teaches is that man does possess free will. And we do have the ability, even though, yes, we do have a sin nature, but we're not so utterly depraved that we can't, I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is my atheist uh, neighbor, uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. Now, a lot of people that validate Greg Jackson on a constant basis and thumbs up his videos, this probably went right over their head and they don't realize what just happened in here as a person in their flesh is boasting before God. We're going to break down the totality of that statement, he says, because he says, even my atheist neighbor can do something good. The Bible says there's not a righteous man on earth that does what is good and never sins. That in God's perspective, from God's mind, he has revealed to us that there's not a single person on this earth that does anything good. That's what it means when it says there's not a righteous man on earth that does what is good and never sins. It means they never do anything good. When Jesus said no one is good but God alone, he was saying that nobody does what is good. 
we see in the New and the Old Testament, it says there's none righteous, no, not even one. There's not a singular person on this planet that is righteous in the sight of God, independent from faith in Jesus Christ. The only righteousness that actually exists is God's righteousness, and he bestows it upon all those who believe, Romans 3.22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. The only righteousness that exists is God's righteousness, and he bestows it upon those who believe. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. Outside of that, there is no righteousness that exists. There's none righteous, no, not even one. So Greg says, even my atheist neighbor can do a good deed. And he's linking this with a choice to, to the gospel, because then he starts talking about even my atheist neighbor can believe the gospel. Now, what Greg meant by even my atheist neighbor can do a good deed is he meant from my human perspective, as I look around and I assess and I make judgments about the nature of reality, I can look at my atheist neighbor and say, look, he appears to be doing a good deed because he's helping this lady across the street. And therefore, since he's doing that, he's doing a good deed from my human perspective and therefore he can do a good thing. But from God's perspective, as he judges the motives and the hearts and the actions of all men universally, he says there's no one good but God alone. There's not a righteous man on earth that does what is good and never sins. Now keep in mind that Greg links this free will choice for his neighbor to do something good with believing the gospel. So I'm going to play this through, and what you'll see is they do believe that they are making a good and virtuous decision. Now we've been attacked on our position as sovereign grace people, as someone that holds that God sovereignly saves people by his grace. We've been attacked because we point out that from your position, you are boasting in choice and you are making it something virtuous and a good decision. Now, David, who's in agreement with Greg on these things, went on a video talking about how it's not making a virtuous and good decision, yet he never could actually explain how that was the case. Here we have Greg clearly pointing out that when you make a decision for the gospel, you're doing something good, you're doing something virtuous. Because Greg believes that unregenerate people can do good things, and you'll hear him say this. And I'm going to go ahead and play the clip again. All right. The, what the Bible teaches is that man does possess free will, and we do have the ability, even though, yes, we do have a sin nature, but we're not so utterly depraved that we can't, I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. So here Greg says that the Bible teaches free will, something he's been unable to establish in the scriptures. The Bible says that the whole world lies under the control of the evil one. We know that we are the children of God and that the whole world lies under the control of the evil one. We see when the Bible talks about repentance, it's something that God has to grant because people are held captive by the devil to do his will. But correct opponents with gentleness, if God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth, that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been led captive by him to do his will. So the scripture doesn't describe a situation of free will. It talks about how they're under the control of the evil one, how they're held captive by the devil to do his will. In order to come to their senses and to the knowledge of truth, God has to grant repentance. And until God grants repentance, they cannot escape the snare of the devil. They cannot come to their senses and to the knowledge of the truth, which is the gospel, which the scripture says, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, that they cannot see the light of the gospel, which displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So the scripture describes a situation where people cannot see the light of the gospel. They are blinded to it by the God of this age. But the devil has control of the world, and that's what we see in the scripture. We don't see this free will scenario. We see that the whole world lies under the control of the evil one. People are caught in the trap of the devil, being held captive by him to do his will. And they cannot see the light of the gospel till God grants them repentance, so they come to their senses and to the knowledge of the truth. He goes on to say that even my neighbor can do a good deed. And again, from God's perspective, there's not a single person doing anything good. The only way a person can be good or right and righteous in God's sight is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. That's the only way to the one who doesn't work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is accredited to righteousness. To the one who doesn't work in accordance to the law but believes on him. That's Jesus who justifies the ungodly. That's a non-guilty verdict. 
his faith is accredited to righteousness. So what Greg Jackson is saying here is, I don't believe people are really that sinful. He even believes that his unbelieving atheist neighbor can do good things, and that's only because he's judging it from his human perspective. His humanistic perspective, he believes that his atheist neighbor is doing good things, but from God's perspective, from his mind, there's not a righteous man on earth that does what is good and never sins. All right. The, what the Bible teaches is that man does possess free will, and we do. Again, something he's never been able to establish, just in ports into Scripture. You have the ability, even though, yes, we do have a sin nature, but we're not so utterly depraved that we can't. So he's saying, yes, we have a sinful nature, but it's not like we can't do any good. It's not like there's some, it's not like there ain't some residual goodness in us. Jesus said there is no one good but God alone. I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. My, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is my atheist, uh, neighbor, uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing in the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. See what Greg Jackson is saying is, hopefully he will. In other words, hopefully chance. Hopefully by chance he'll be saved, as though that's how people are saved, by chance, when they're saved by God. And they're not saved by human will. And notice how Greg says, hopefully he will, because I've been working on him. In other words, the reason why this person will ultimately be saved is because Greg has been working on him. When the Bible says, I am confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you, will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus mentions what that good work is in John chapter 6, verse 28. He says, this is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. That God does a specific work in individuals that they believe in the one that God sent, but he only does that to his call. He only does that to his lack, those that he has chosen. Those he's chosen that they would believe and be saved. Brothers and sisters, beloved of God, we always are bound to give Thanks to God for you. From the beginning, he chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. From the beginning, God chose you to be saved. And those people that God has chosen to save, he has decided to do a work in them that they believe. This is the work of God that you believe in the one that he sent. God is doing a work in specific individuals. And the Apostle Paul says, I am confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. That when God begins that good work of believing in the Son, he perfects that all the way until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm confident of this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, Greg Jackson recognized this to be a good work, but he just believes that people are doing the good work. He doesn't believe this is the good work of God, that this is the work of God that you believe. Greg Jackson thinks it's a work of man, and then he links it to someone doing something virtuous, like his atheist neighbor doing something good. He goes, even my atheist neighbor can do something good. And then he goes, even my atheist neighbor can believe the gospel. In other words, look, even my atheist neighbor can make this good and virtuous choice. See, it's very clear that these people are boasting in their choice before God. When the scripture says, consider your own calling brother, and not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the mighty. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And the debased and the despised things God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh may boast in his sight. But by his own doing you are in Christ Jesus. So these verses are telling us not to boast in our own choice, but to consider our own calling, that God is the one who chooses. Over and over in this passage it shows that God calls individuals, some over others, 
Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty according to the flesh have been called. And then God chooses some over others. And then it wraps all this up by saying that no man may boast before God. Boast because why? Because we didn't choose God, he chose us. And verse 30 says, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. By God's doing, not human will, not our decision, not what we decided, not our choice, but God, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus. This is why you can see from Greg's humanistic free will perspective, he boasts in choice before God and he teaches other people to do the same, that it's by your human free will that you're in Christ Jesus. You made the choice. Don't forget that. You're the one that made the choice. It's by your human free will. So it ultimately leads to boasting in yourself to the reason why you're saved and the reason why others get saved because of what you did, your preaching, your planning, your watering. You don't give credit to God for the increase in the growth. And you also think highly of yourself because you believe faith self-originates and other people can do it too. Other people can make the right choice. They can do what I did. Just like that atheist neighbor of mine that can do something good. He did something good. He can also make the good choice for salvation. I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. <laughs> he has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, my atheist uh, neighbor, uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. I mean, even my... My atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. Uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. And hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. But hopefully he will, because I've been working on it. This is why the Apostle Paul said, By the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think highly of yourselves than you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment, as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. That when Paul is speaking to believers about their faith, he's saying, Consider this, by the grace given to me. And they knew that the grace given to Paul, he didn't make the right choice in this free will scenario. God came and revealed himself to Paul, and that's why he had a disposition change of his will and so Paul is saying by the grace given to me I say to every one of you not to think highly of yourselves than you ought to think but with sound sober judgment as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith when it comes to believers God has dealt to each one of them a measure of faith and Paul is equating this with the grace that was given to him and that's why Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, By grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, but is a gift of God. Faith is not self-originating. It's from God's hand. It's a gift. And by grace you have been saved. You see how Paul referenced grace again. By the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, not to think highly of yourselves, and you ought to think, but with sound sober judgment, as God has dealt to each one of you a measure of faith. He's dealt to each one of you a measure of the gift of faith, by his grace, by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, but it's a gift of God. See, when you don't realize that faith is a gift of God, you can think highly of yourselves. You can boast because you believe that it's a good, virtuous thing that anyone else could have done too. Paul would have never boasted in his virtuous choice because he knew that God chose him. That's why he told us in 1 Corinthians 1 26 to consider our own calling that God has chosen some over others. And he also tells us, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. So Paul links him being chosen along with us being chosen. He says, hey, I was chosen and you were chosen. And you were chosen to have a gift of faith and believe in the truth. Brothers and sisters, beloved of God, we always are bound to give thanks to God for you. Because from the beginning, he chose you to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. God chose people to be saved so that they would believe in the truth. And he deals out a measure of faith to those people he has chosen. But in Greg's free will system, he emphatically denies that 
faith is a gift that's something that self originates and he gives it to God by which he's saved. So they don't believe on this free will side of things. They don't believe that faith is a gift that God gives us that saves us. They believe that they give God a gift of faith and by that gift they give God, they are saved. All right. The, what the Bible teaches is that man does possess free will and we do have the ability, even though, yes, we do have a sin nature, but we're not so utterly depraved we're not that sinful, guys. We're not as sinful as other people are trying to say. There's some residual goodness in us by which we can make the right choice. That's what he's saying here by implication because you see by his following statements. That we can't, I mean, even my, my atheist neighbor can choose to do a good deed. Even my atheist neighbor can choose a good deed. Again, humanistic assessment. This isn't from the mind of God. God says there's not a righteous man on earth that does what is good and never sins. So Greg imports his humanistic perspective. He has free will. Uh, and the fact of the matter is my atheist uh, neighbor uh, God's given him the capacity, the capability of believing the gospel. See, he just linked his atheist neighbor by being able to do something good. In other words, doing something virtuous, then links it to believing the gospel. So they do believe that believing the gospel is a good and virtuous choice. He then goes on to say, well, hopefully he will believe. In other words, whatever this chance system of free will, whatever's behind this chance system of free will, Hopefully, at the end of the day, he will believe. And then he says, because I'm working on him. This is human pride by believing that you're the one that makes someone saved. Hopefully, he will, because I've been working on him. But the See, because I've been working on him. Hopefully, he will, because I've been working on him. This is why the Apostle Paul said, I planted Apollos water, but it was God who gave the increase. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. See, when you tell the gospel to a crowd of people, there could be 50 people in the crowd, and you plant a seed in every one of them. When you tell the gospel to someone, a seed is planted. But the only way it comes to life, the only way there's increase in growth, is if God causes it. I planted, Apollos watered, but it was God who gave the increase, so neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. In other words, you have nothing to boast about because you don't cause increase, you don't cause growth. You don't cause people to be saved by preaching the gospel. Only God causes increase. Only God causes growth. See, when Greg says, hopefully he believes because I'm working on him. In other words, hopefully he has the increase in growth because all this stuff that I did. Well, he who plants and he who waters isn't anything. That means they're nothing. Only God who causes the increase and only God who causes the growth. So you can plant the seed of the gospel in a thousand people. But only the people who God is calling, he's going to give those seeds increase and he's going to give those seeds growth. And so I'm going to probably keep this short. I don't want to keep this video too long. Plus, we might do some more things within this video. There's some other really erroneous statements that Greg Jackson says and might eventually cover it in a future video. I know I'm going to be kind of busy this weekend. Hopefully Greg doesn't take it down. I imagine David's probably calling Greg in a panic. Take the video down. Take the video down. Because it's exposing us. They don't want to be exposed that their free will heresy leads to boasting before God and believing they've made a good and virtuous decision. And this video clearly lays it out. This clearly lays out that's exactly what Greg Jackson believes. And when you hold to a free will position, that's what it leads to ultimately. And the whole time, me and my brother Lewis have been considered unvirtuous for not believing that we have made the right choice, that we have done the good and virtuous thing. We've been considered unvirtuous. Because we've been boasting in God and his choice of us. So I'm going to wrap this video up here, brothers and sisters. I hope people will come to realize in salvation who they should be boasting in and not in self. As the scripture lays these things out. So God bless you. Peace to you. Take care. And I hope your night or day is going good. God bless. Then I got no